Just Joe here, and this is Too Many Movies at the Movies. Okay, well, obviously I'm not at the movies, but I just got back from seeing Baby Driver. Yes, Baby Driver, and... I was kind of confused because there was no babies driving in this movie, you know, I thought that was kind of weird. Or I thought there were going to be drivers that, that were actually driving babies around, which didn't really sound very good. I thought Edgar Wright, the writer-director, had lost his freaking mind. But no, Baby Driver is basically a heist movie about this, you know, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm going to talk about Baby Driver and then I'm going to read at the end. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun watching this. Why? Because, you know, I'm a lot of fun to listen to, so... <laughs> so as always, I'm going to start with the plot slash the script. Okay, the main character, uh, he was basically discovered by Kevin Spacey's character uh, when he was young, after his parents passed away, and, you know, he became this driver to pay Kevin Spacey's character back because he stole a bunch of shit from him, and he's a really good driver, and I mean a really, really good driver. The opening scene in this, with the heist going on and showing the driving skills, and the fact that none of the cars were CG, that's nice for a change. Movies. Hollywood. But he's a driver for basically like uh, uh, bank robbers, you know, and heists and everything like that. And he's a really good driver and they always have a great plan and he's really good at his job, but he's trying to pay this guy back. You know, and eventually he does. He, he pays Kevin Spacey's character back. This happens early in the movie, so don't whine and bitch like I'm, you know, ruining the movie for. Yeah, don't do spoilers here. Don't do spoilers. Don't do spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. But yeah, he pays Kevin Spacey's character back and he's trying to, you know, get away from that life. He's got, you know, uh, this uh, blind man who, uh, you know, basically took him in as a foster home and he's trying to take care of him. Then he finds this beautiful girl and they develop a relationship and they have a lot in common and he's trying to just get away and have a normal life. He even becomes a pizza delivery guy and that's, that's just funny. But he gets sucked back in for one more big heist and that's kind of when the movie really begins because basically shit goes sideways for the rest of the movie. You know, and that's basically the plot. I mean, the opening, you know, it just, it started off with showing a heist and introducing you to these characters and this world and what they do. And God damn, this coffee is hot. And then it shows this beautiful long shot that goes around the block and just, oh my God, it's so good, but I'll get to the directing later. But yeah, that was basically the plot. The script by Edgar Wright, I think, I don't want to say it's better than a Shaun of the Dead or a Hot Fuzz. It's better than World's End or even Scott, like Scott Pilgrim versus the world. But I do feel like this is Edgar Wright's best movie. This is definitely his best movie that he's made. I mean, this uh, to me is an Oscar contender, a little, a little heist movie called Baby Driver. I mean, this script is fantastic. It's funny when it needs to be funny. The jokes are fantastic. I don't think one joke fell flat. The characters are well drawn out. There's only uh, one real scene of exposition from Kevin Spacey's character, but it's necessary and you have to do it. And it was a cool scene that ended with a really funny joke. So you kind of forget that it was exposition, but it doesn't matter. You need exposition, it's fine. So yeah, the script by Edgar Wright is mind-blowingly good so good and what's even better is directing but i'll get to that later but next i'm going to talk about the cast slash the characters you know kevin spacey he's always great in everything he does he's basically a supporting role in this he's not in it all that much but when he's there he's funny he's intimidating he's scary uh but charming as well and i guess that kind of describes kevin spacey as a human being as well <laughs> but that is kevin spacey and he's great in this jamie fox made me nervous in this movie he is fantastic uh the main character ansel uh, i can't remember his last name he this is a star making performance for that kid i mean he's done some great stuff before like a fault in our stars he made me <laughs> cry in that movie but this is a star-making performance, good for him, he deserves it. And the girl who plays his girlfriend, she was the lead in Cinderella, I believe. Wasn't too big on that movie, but she was good in it. And even though she's English, she does a really great American accent, and she's fantastic in this. And all the other supporting roles, John Hamm is dangerous, sexy, I'll admit it, even though, you know, straight guys can't say that, <laughs> But John Hamm is sexy in this, dangerous, but funny, you know, and that's John Hamm. And I can't remember, the, I don't know the girl's name, but the woman who plays his wife in this, she's beautiful and sexy, but dangerous as well. And some of the other supporting characters on the other heist, because you go through a certain amount of heists at the beginning of the movie, and some of those characters say, and some of those characters don't. Uh, but that's basically the entire cast. And even the, the guy who played the blind guy who takes care of uh, the main character, he was good for, you know, he, he was deaf. And I don't know if he's deaf in real life, but in the movie, he's deaf. And, you know, he signs, but he was great. His facial expressions were fantastic. Uh, the cast was great. 
and I've already said it, the characters were all well-rounded, well-written, great, juicy mwah, dialogue for these characters to say. All of them, I cared about every single one of them. It, they were so good. I love these characters. I never rooted for them because they were bad guys. But good job, Edgar. And last but not least, I'm going to talk about the directing, the editing, and the music. The direction in this is fantastic. Edgar Wright has always been a very clever, but also um, a groundbreaking director. And by that I mean like he takes chances and he sees how a movie, you know, can be where it doesn't have to be such, you know, standard, but he, know, but he knows how to, you know, make unique shots, but also bring it down and just, when having a conversation, just the back and forth, you know, as any normal movie would be. So his direction in this, I mean, just that opening, the high scenes and the stuff he does with the cars, the chase scenes were some of the best I've ever seen in cinema. And that long shot at the beginning just completely brought you into this world and into uh, the main character's world. It's just the direction was so brilliant. And I think, you know, it's basically his masterpiece. I'm sure he'll do even better, but out of all of his movies, this may be for his direction, you know, it's, it is his best direction. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. And the editing was crisp um, during the action scenes. It was crisp and fast and very well put together. But it wasn't the usual Edgar Wright like, poo, 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 you know, you know, like I am in real life. <laughs> it's his movies are always like real fast editing, and it fit for like Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz or At World's End, um, even Scott Pilgrim. This movie it does that, but it also slows it down and just kind of becomes where the editing is just what it needs to be. And it's, it's, I don't really know how to explain it, but the editing is mwah, something else that's great. And the music, the soundtrack, my god, I'm not kidding. The soundtrack, it was like uh, like a Guardians of the Galaxy or even kind of a Suicide Squad where the soundtrack, you know, really helped tell the story of the movie. I mean, basically, you know, the, the kid in this, the main character, he listens to music all the time. So the music in this movie helps tell the story and I won't ruin why he does it all the time, but he literally has headphones in his ears. He's listening to music all the time and he's got like iPods and shit, like hundreds of iPods. He has music, <laughs> music on for different moods or different days or different heists. You know, it's, it's kind of neat the way they set that up. But like right now I'm downloading the soundtrack. I bought it from iTunes on my phone because the sound selection there really weren't too many songs that I recognized. You know, it was a lot like James Gunn's Guardians movies where they chose so many great songs to help tell the story in the movie and it was so cleverly woven in. My God, it was so good. So final thoughts on this movie, go fucking see it. Those are my final thoughts on it. Baby Driver is fantastic. But unfortunately, the theater that I went to go see at, uh, they lost power at the front of the building. <laughs> So the last 15 minutes of the movie, I did not get to see. I'm sorry, I got to see it. I didn't hear it. Sucks. But I stayed and I watched the rest of it and I found out on Wikipedia, you know, exactly what happens. But I got a, I got a stub, it's in my wallet, I'm not gonna show it to you. But to go see the movie again, and I will go see it again next week. But even without hearing the last 15 minutes, I am telling you, please go see this movie. It is a huge hit. I'm so glad it didn't get lost in the shuffle of all the summer movies, because it was a dangerous time for this film to come out. It really was. It could have gotten lost so quickly, because that happens sometimes. I think, I feel like that's what happened with Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That's a great movie with some flaws, but great. And it should have been a lot more successful than it was. But thank God Edgar Wright came back with Baby Driver. I give a Just Joe rating of five out of five. So thank you very much for tuning in to Too Many Movies at the Movies with me, Just Joe. Uh, you know, look at the description below and all the links, my Facebook page, my Twitter page, my Instagram, uh, the podcast that I'm on, you know, uh, subscribe to my channel, Apartment B1 Productions, and you know, you can watch more videos like this. Every Friday, I've got a new video up where I watch a movie from my collection that I've never seen before. Um, also, whenever I go see a movie in the theater, I do one of these. So please, if you have any suggestions about uh, any movies from my collection you want me to watch if I've never seen it before. I will let you know if I haven't seen it or if I have. Uh, just leave a comment below or leave whatever comment you want. If you hate, you, if you love this, you know, whatever. I'm sure you love it. I mean, why wouldn't you love some love toss, you know, fast talking idiot on the internet? I mean, who doesn't love that? But anyway, go through all that stuff. Look at it. I'm just Joe. I've still got too many movies and I will see you in the next video. Take care.
quiet on the set. 